Beth Davenport. I'm here with Tarek Morshed of the Morshed Group at Sotheby's International Real Estate in Austin, Texas. Today we will discuss what happened in Q3 of 2022 in the market, where the market is going in 2022, and what it all means to you, whether you're a buyer, seller, or homeowner. Thanks for joining us today, Tarek. Well, thank you. Excited to be here and looking forward to sharing what happened in Q3 and some of the information that I think will be compelling. So Tarek, what did happen in Q3? You no, know, I, I would say there are three main things to note for Q3. Uh, number one, values across the market pulled back 5% due to interest rates jumping to almost 7%, which is huge given only a year ago there were about 3.5%. Uh, stock market valuations are down 20% in Q3. Uh, inflation hitting 8%, and even job market concerns really starting to take hold towards the end of Q3. Uh, and in 2021, you know, we predicted that 2022 would be the year uh, the market would finally peak out, and it certainly did that and then some with some of these factors at play. Uh, number two, supply ended at three months, uh, which means there are about 11,000 homes on the market. This is up from one month supply in January, where there was about 3,000 homes. And for context, a six month supply would be about 18,000 homes, and that's an equilibrium market between buyer and seller demand. Uh, the other important headline here is we're still below 50% of a balanced market in spite of all of that's happened. Number three, fear. Uh, started driving the market really. Uh, buyers are gating buying with all the concerns I've mentioned. They're trying to adjust to higher interest rates and homes are now sitting on the market for an average of about 60 days, even though the supply is at six, at three months. Uh, and in conjunction, sellers are getting on average 94% of list price versus 105% of list price uh, around the end of Q2. Builder supply numbers have moved up from two months to about six months. So to share some real world examples here, uh, this inner city condo we had listed in one of the hottest zip codes, 78704, in an area called Galindo, just 10 minutes to downtown and listed at 745K. Uh, prices range in this area from 600,000 to about two and a half million. Uh, it took us 60 days to sell and we had to get aggressive as new builds on the same street dropped their prices. And prior to Q3, uh, this would have sold in one to two days and likely gone 5% above list price uh, given the updates being a freestanding condo with a two-car garage and a gated community. Uh, and we had to go through a few price reductions and sold about 5% below list. Or another example we have here, this home is in Westlake, uh, a great uh, neighborhood west of Austin uh, where average sales prices are closer to $2 million. Uh, we represented the buyer. Uh, this home is in a subdivision called Senna Hills, a close-knit, smaller community of homes with a great neighborhood feel, uh, and prices banned from about 1.3 to 3 million. Uh, this home was actually listed at 1.7 on an awesome uh, greenbelt lot, uh, but it needed some cosmetics. Uh, and in Westlake, anything typically in this price range normally would fly off the shelf that's decent. And while we moved quickly, uh, we didn't have to trade at list price and were even able to negotiate down a bit. And six months ago, that just simply wouldn't have happened. Uh, we would have been in multiple offers, which we didn't even get into multiple offers. So Tarek, where is the market currently and where is it going? You know, I, I think we're going to continue to see supply rise and we're probably going to end up at that five to six month supply in about 18,000 homes. So it's going to move up and continue to move up from 11,000 homes. Uh, and I think that prices are going to drop another 5% in Q4. And that's kind of what we've been seeing so far. Uh, even though prices typically don't drop till we get above that six month equilibrium point. Um, however, we also don't see a major pullback is going to happen in Austin. Uh, reasons and there's multiple reasons here uh, first even with everything I've shared that you know the flip side is we're still at 40% below equilibrium right at a three month supply 40 to 50% below equilibrium in terms of real inventory Two, you know we're probably still gonna see 40,000 jobs added to our local economy in 2022 and that's with 
numbers actually being around 60,000 and us assuming that in the next few months we'll see about 20,000, 10 to 20,000 jobs being lost with everything that's going on. Uh, Austin's unemployment rate is only 3%. And so even if you lose those 20,000 jobs, you know, that's not a huge impact on our workforce. It's about the 2% number or 1%. And our economy is much more diverse than people realize, as you can see on this chart, uh, where there's such an even distribution across industry versus purely being tech. Uh, last few points, uh, Austin has the highest share of equity-rich households, so meaning how much equity relevant to loan amounts. Uh, we're also still the number two fastest growing population in the country, and we'll see about 50,000 people moving here in 2022. Uh, so that all is going to really make a difference in seeing a market that doesn't pull back massively. So Tark, what does this all mean for sellers? You know, I think for sellers, you really have to price now to stand out as a value. And that's a big shift. Uh, given the fear in the market, homes that stand out as value are the ones that are going to get attention and sell. Too many sellers are still pricing to test the market and that simply isn't working uh, and we're seeing sellers chase down the market when they could have sold earlier and it actually netted more by being more of a value proposition in the beginning and you know considering what we've shared uh, in terms of values continue to drop uh, through this year and even partially into next year we think it'll be another three to five percent you know i highly recommend getting out of this mindset of testing versus really standing out as a value. So Tark, what does this mean for buyers? So for buyers, between now and the end of Q2 of next year is absolutely your best timing. By then, the rest of Austin will figure out the market here isn't crashing uh, because of all the things I was mentioning earlier economically, and that that's gonna be around the bottom of our economic portion. So likely most of the job cuts will have happened by then or around that time. Buyers will have financially and psychologically calibrated around higher interest rates, and rates will also actually start inching down. So a great phrase to remember is, you marry your home, not your rate. So look at creative options as buyers, like ARMS, if you need some help around that, or have seller buy down your rate versus just negotiate on price, and then you can refi later, uh, and buy now while others aren't, because again, people are gonna figure that out. And what does this mean for homeowners, Tarek? So for homeowners, you know, contractors will have their pipelines finally starting to shrink a little bit. So it's time to take advantage of that by getting some better pricing. I think that, that you're going to see that in the next, you know, kind of two to three months, six months. Some of these deep pipelines they've had are going to start running out. And so you'll just see some better pricing. And I think it's a really great time to take advantage of all the equity as a homeowner you've seen in the last two years and uh, make some improvements. Well, thanks for being with us today, Tarek. You've given us some great insights and you've certainly opened our minds to what happened in Q3 and where we're going the rest of the year. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, as always, everybody, uh, you know, please go to our website, themoreshedgroup.com. Uh, where you'll be able to see not only this market update, but past ones and monthly articles that we're posting relevant to what's going on. And uh, we'll look forward to being at the next one together. Sounds great. Thanks for joining us today.